It's definitely like a unique uh, live performance, you know, like we're doing it directly to tape. When I was doing the tape club, I had a tape running, recording live as it was going, and then I was using that as my master tape to make dubs of it. I didn't know that I was gonna be an expert on tapes and linoleum stamps going into 2021, but here I am spit out at the other end, and I'm like, yeah, I know a little thing or two about that. <laughs> It didn't take long before people realized all you gotta do is put a little bit of tape over them, like so. Now you can record on it. But once I reach the end, I hear a little click on here, on the tape. Okay, tape's done on the A side. I'm DJ Seif. I'm a turntablist and DJ out of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada. Um, Planet Earth, Milky Way Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, I've just been collecting records for the past 20 years. Seven inches, 12 inches. I'm all about the records, you know what I mean? Getting to December, I'm like, I'm gonna make a tape. I sat down, I recorded this tape. And then I was like, okay, I gotta listen back to this master tape now. And all of a sudden I hear this and I'm like, oh no, 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 no. So I stopped it and it ate my tape. <laughs> Whole hours worth of mixing, totally like gone at that point. You know what? That's fine. I'll get it out in January. So I started like a Patreon. One of the first people that went to go sign up for like $20 a month. And I was just like, okay, this guy's getting a tape. <laughs> so that was, the, that was the beginning of the tape club. This guy's gonna get a tape. Did 15 copies of each tape each month. Maybe about five or six people signed up in January that were like, oh yeah, I wanna get your tapes. This is really cool. I can't believe you're doing this, right? Before the end of April, I started like promoting the April tape and then all the seats got filled. Over the course of four months, I filled all 15 seats. I feel pretty good right now. I feel excited that the tape club finally sold out and uh, it's going to be a good year. So the artwork was an interesting thing too because I wanted to handle everything in house. My first thought was like, you know, maybe I could do like stamped art, you know, and I could design some stamps and just like stamp each cover of each tape, right? And so I started, you know, like figuring out, okay, well, how am I gonna do the artwork? And I would design it on like a piece of paper. Then I would actually manually transfer it to the uh, linoleum with like some trace paper and, and, and do that and then carve it all out, stamp the, stamp each tape that way. And that's how I did each tape throughout the whole year. You know, you see when you have like all the series lined up on DVD and the spines, they line up to make a little picture. I thought that would be really cool to do for the tapes as well. The spines were all done in January. Like there was a lot of work that got put into the tape club very early on to make sure everything was good for the rest of the year. Like every day after work, I would come home, okay, back to the tape club. We have to get this all ready and then get this first tape out by the end of the month. It was a lot of work, but it was fun. I would say that there's not really any two tapes that have a very similar vibe to them. Like, you know, I definitely did a tape that was like rooted in jazz, but had a little bit of like prog rock in it. I did a tape that was like, uh, you know, funk soul and breaks. I did a tape that was like all like bleeps and bloops and like video game sounds and stuff like that. Hey, what would a tape sound like if it was like disco, but like from another planet? What would a tape sound like if it was like completely and totally like relaxed, like there was not a single beat to be found? What would a tape sound like if it was like uh, a taxi driver talking to a passenger with like music going on in the background and stuff like that? Yeah, just, it was all kind of all over the place, you know? It was a very tedious and time consuming process, but I loved every moment of it because it was like, it was intimate, right? And uh, reproducing it uh, was never really the goal. It was always just, you know, capture the feeling more than anything. Looking back at it, I'm really proud of every single tape that I did. I think I want to keep it a fully analog project just because that's the spirit of how it started. It doesn't have an existence anywhere on the internet. There's a certain like magic to that, I think. Ultimately, it's just a thing that plays music, really. But, <laughs> but like there's something more to it than that for some people. And I mean, I, I vibe with that, you know? Okay, you figure at least 15 a, a month, plus the mixing and uh, the artwork and everything like that, I would say seven, 800 hours, maybe more than that. 